What's up everybody? My name is Caitlin Blair and welcome back to my channel. It's finally Halloween and it is time for this year's Halloween Decorate With Me and House Tour video. I worked extra hard on this one for you guys to give you the best possible experience and all of the spooky Halloween vibes and ambiance. I really have a lot of themed areas this year so you guys do not want to miss any section of this video. I'm really excited to get into this video so let's just jump right into it. So a few days before I started decorating, I brought in all of the Halloween totes that were in our garage. And this was a collection of not only my husband and I's Halloween decor, but as well as my parents. So I had double the amount of decor to work with this year. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a little overwhelming, but also really exciting because I had a lot of choices of what themes I could go for in certain rooms of the house. Just as I did last year, I decided to bring up all of the items that I knew I wanted to use I had separated them by color scheme and by theme so I could create a cohesive theme wherever I was decorating. So that same evening I decided to start decorating so I grabbed myself a tasty beverage and then I put on one of my favorite spooky movies which was The Addams Family and I began decorating. So this area has now taken place of the mantle area that I was decorating in my previous videos. This is a very old saloon piano that I bought off of an old friend and I have been in love with it ever since and we have made it a staple of decorating in my parents' home for many years now. I really wanted to give it a new theme this year so this was very inspired by the film Trick or Treat as well as just very classic vintage Halloween-y vibes. I kept the theme black and orange with just a little touch of white. My goal was to remain very loyal to classic Halloween icons like the Headless Horseman, a haunted house, the orange and black witch, the autumn leaves. I felt like less was more with this piano this year and I just tried to keep it very simple and very classic and I feel like we pulled it off. After finishing up with the Velvet Runner, I added in the Gothic Candle Pedestals from Bath & Body Works. I like to use these as a bit of extra height for some smaller items that I like to highlight. I then added in some mini pumpkins, these glittery witch boot tea light candle holders which are amazing. And then I added in one of my very favorite candles from Sickwix which smells like you just dumped out an entire bag of Halloween candy and it's incredible. Lastly, I added in one of my very favorite Halloween signs that we have, which is this really adorable vintage owl. And I also added in some pumpkin lights that we've had for a long time, but they really remind me of Sam's Sucker from Trick or Treat. They just have that classic jack-o'-lantern look, which just really reminds me of Trick or Treat. And at the end of the montage, you'll see more of the Trick or Treat elements thrown into the entire piano aesthetic. So definitely stay tuned for the end of the video for that. Next up, you know we had to do it to them. We broke out the webcaster gun for a second year and we had so much fun with it this time around. I really feel like the cobwebs turned out even better this year than they did last year because last year we went super heavy and this year we went a little bit lighter and a little bit more spread out with the cobwebs. So if you guys have never seen the webcaster gun before, please check out last year's decorating video as well as my haul video from last year and I explain a little bit more about what it is and how to use it, but it really creates the most natural and theatrical looking cobwebs that you could possibly imagine. I really love the look that the webcaster gun creates and I am just thrilled with the end result. Stay tuned for the end of the video to see how all of this looks at night. It was the next day and it was a very beautiful rainy autumn day so I decided to decorate our coffee bar area. So before I got started I put on my favorite playlist and made myself a cup of Bones coffee which if you've been watching me for a while you know is my favorite. So 
so I lit a candle and just got all of the vibes ready to go to have a beautiful time decorating. So I started off this area by cleaning off my new tiered tray with my very favorite Mrs. Meyer spray in the acorn spice scent, which is literally fall in a bottle. It is incredible. It will just make your home smell like a complete autumn paradise. I began decorating the tiered tray by piling on all of my very favorite current spooky mugs and I tried to place them in a way where there was a lot of symmetry in the colors and the height of the mugs before I began placing more decorative items. Next, I added in the spooky ghost that I got at Michael's, as well as this little vintage cat, some Halloween straws, and some coffee stir sticks in my Killstar mug. Next, I added in some candy corn, which is always my favorite thing to do on a tiered tray. And then I realized that I didn't really like the mug that I chose to put the candy corn in because I knew that I wanted to pile on some little marshmallow ghost peeps. I didn't really think the ghost on ghost look was really gonna work. So I took the candy corn out of the ghost mug and I poured it into the skull mug that I got from TJ Maxx and that worked out perfectly. After the candy corn, I added in some more fall leaves, which as you guys know, I feel transforms literally anything. If you wanna make any area that you are decorating feel more like Halloween and more like fall, just use some autumn leaf garland. I mean, it is a great filler. It adds a little extra oomph to any area that you feel just needs a little extra something. And I highly recommend using them literally everywhere. Next, I added some cobwebs into the bottom of my ghost mug because I knew that I wanted to add some short straws to the bottom tier to kind of balance out the decor on the top. Next, I moved on to my coffee shelf above the tiered tray and I just played around with a different arrangement of things. I knew that I wanted to use that trick or treat sign that I bought at Michael's. I also added in that Killstar ghost canister as well as a spooky tree and various classic Halloween items. This was another area where I was really going for just a very classic Halloween vibe. I wanted to create symmetry, but I didn't want to cover up the sign too much. So I just mixed and matched different items until I got something that felt complete. I also added some of those fairy lights that I showed you guys last year, the amazing set of fairy lights from Amazon that has every setting in the world to choose from. They are so gorgeous. So I added the fairy lights on top of the autumn leaf garland just to bring everything to life. Lastly, I started working on decorating the bottom of the coffee bar and I didn't want to overcrowd this area and I also wanted it to stay a little bit functional. So I played around with the placement of some of the mugs that I wanted to use, which was a collection of Ray Dunn pumpkin mugs, which were very cute and very minimalist, which I enjoyed. I used my Killstar Halloween is Everyday rug. I just felt it went really well with our black kitchen. And then I just added in some velvet pumpkins on the bottom as well as more fall garland. My cat Mayhem, she just had to join in on the fun. She's so nosy and she has to watch everything that I do, but I really enjoy having her by my side as my little furry companion and just entertain her and play with her every chance I get. I love her so much. And I just love that she came to join me while filming my video.
so that's a wrap for the coffee bar area and now we are going to move on to decorating the bar cart in my office slash beauty room. So in my office, I went for a spooky desert themed bar cart, which was a little difficult to pull off. But in my office, I've been going for more of a desert theme lately. I really wanted to bring in elements of the desert, but still be able to keep it spooky. So I started off by adding in that cow skull that I got from at home, as well as the sweater weather candle, because I felt that it just tied that desert theme together with the blue and the orange. And then I added in my cactus plant, as well as this pumpkin mouth dude filled with all of my favorite bath bombs, some of them being fall scented and one little cactus. I really like the idea of putting my bath bombs in there and I can just pull one out whenever I'm in the mood for just some spooky bath time action. Because best believe I'm still going to be celebrating Halloween for at least a week or two after Halloween because honestly this video takes me so long to make that I kind of have to extend my celebrations into November so it is what it is. I then added in some fall garland, some fairy lights, some of my very favorite autumn fragrances, which I do have an autumn fragrance video coming up for you guys very soon. I wanted to get it up earlier, but you know, time flies. <laughs> so that'll be coming up very soon. And then I added in some wine glasses filled with some candy corn and cobwebs, as well as another one of my favorite bottles of wine, which is the Witch's Brew. And obviously my queen of Halloween sign had to come into play here because it's my office and I am the queen of Halloween. Or so everyone tells me. I then added in some cobwebs and then followed that up with a candle that my dad actually got me last fall. So I've been trying to burn it sparingly because it's one of the last things that he bought me that I really treasure. So I felt it was only appropriate to keep it on my bar cart. So every time I see it and I burn it, I can think of him. So that's it for the office bar cart. I kept it really simple and I really love how this turned out. It was just the perfect amount of Halloween and spooky vibes mixed with my desert motif going on. It just really sets the mood in here and I'm really pleased with it. So we are moving on to my very favorite part of the house that I decorated, which was our tiki bar area. And it was very inspired by Porco Tiki Lounge, which was closed for the longest time. So we said, why not just make our own tiki bar in our basement? So that's what we did. And I could not wait to decorate it for Halloween. So I started out by adding in this green leafy garland, as well as some monstera leaf placemats, and then I added in our pineapple drink tray and some spooky themed liquor bottles to the mini bar. I then added in something similar to what I did last year, which was the little black cauldron with some green cobwebs. Green cobwebs create just this bubbling cauldron effect, and I really loved how the green of the cobwebs and the orange of the witch's brew bottle really tied in the color scheme. Next, I added in the skeleton hand holding the cocktail glass as well as some Halloween cocktail picks and then I decided to repurpose this poison apple candle holder and instead used it to hold some tiki straws and I thought it ended up looking like the spookiest little pineapple. I don't know, that's just me. After stacking some of our favorite cocktail books, I then added in some more of those LED ice cubes and I just put them in these awesome tiki glasses that my husband got for his birthday and I decided to set all of them to blue and green, which I feel like added a really cool effect. I decided to add some cobwebs to the tropical birds just to give them a spookier effect. I really loved putting these gummy worms and spiders in this giant margarita glass. It added so much color and it made the bar so much more fun.
Next, I moved on to our liquor shelf, and I started off by highlighting this amazing on-theme bottle of rum and this little pirate guy that we've had for so many years now, and I just thought they paired really well together on the shelf. I then added in this awesome bedazzled skull that I got at home last year, which I felt looked very pirate-themed with the pearl in the eye socket, and then the sequins had a little bit of red. I then added some creepy cloth on the sides of the liquor shelf and then added in the two skeleton fish that I bought at at home this year. Then I decided to add some fishing net that I bought on Amazon to the tiki bar just to give it more of a shipwrecked effect. I really enjoyed using this fishing net when my husband and I were an undead pirate and a sea siren for Halloween a few years ago and I figured I would add some back in to this year's decor. We were both really big fans of John Carpenter's The Fog, so I tried to lightly give this area down here just a little bit of that vibe. And in my decor in general, I also take a lot of inspiration from Hollow Weekends, which is held at Cedar Point, which is our nearest amusement park. We love the atmosphere there so much, so I've been really inspired over the years by their special effects, so I try to weave some of that inspiration into all of my Halloween decor. Finally, I added in these color-changing RGB light bulbs and these awesome side table lamps that blended in really well with the tiki bar. I ended up putting them on the floor behind the bar so that they would give the bar a really spectacular eerie glow. So I added some final touches. First, I decided to take my posable skeleton that I used last year. Last year, I had the skeleton dressed as Bone Hilda from The Sims, but this year I decided to dress the skeleton as a pirate, obviously to fit with the theme. Later on, before I shot the montage, I did buy the pirate a hook and an eye patch, so you guys will see that at the end of the video, and it really tied the whole look together, and I'm really thrilled about it. Then I decided to bring down our ocean wave projector, which it was like a last minute decision and I can't believe it didn't occur to me sooner, but it really transformed the entire atmosphere. I loved it so much that I bought a second one to project onto the tarot card area, which you will see in the night montage at the end of the video. So here's the final look of the tiki bar area during the day, and I am so excited to show you guys what it looks like lit up at night. Let's move on now to the spooky art deco living room. Next, I decorated our living area, which is kept as an art deco theme all year round, but around Halloween time, I kick it up 12 notches and I make it very over the top art deco, but spooky. So of course I had to put on Metropolis. And the first thing I focused on was a new addition to our living area, which is this gorgeous smoked glass bar cart. I started out decorating the bar cart by adding in one of the most fitting liquor bottles that we have, which is this gorgeous Sexton Iron. Irish whiskey. I really have always loved this bottle so much. I then added in some more of our Art Deco Halloween elements from last year, as well as this crystal cocktail glass holder with the Art Deco glasses that we used last year. But I do come to find at a moment that they do not fit very well on this tray, so I end up going back to the original glasses that it came with, which actually fit much better. And I added in some leftover cocktail napkins from our wedding, which I felt fit perfectly. After playing around with the placement of everything on the top tier, I did move on to the bottom tier of the bar cart where I added in some very spooky and themed wine bottles. And the bottle of Avalon wine also has a very special and significant meaning to my husband and I. So not only did it fit in with the theme of the black and gold, but it also had a really special meaning for us. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Dr. Fibes films, but I've watched them recently and it totally blew my mind how art deco they were. Were. I had no idea and I've been in love with art deco decor and history for years now and I had no clue that these classic Vincent Price films were all art deco inspired. It just blew my mind. My mom showed them to me and we had a really wonderful time watching them together. If you have not seen the Dr. Fibes films, please watch them right away. They're currently on YouTube. Go watch them. They will prove to you how many films were inspired by Dr. Fibes. Dr. Fibes was ahead of its time and I applaud it for its originality, for its style, for its set design and plot. It was just so entertaining and I just I highly recommend these films to you guys if you have not seen them. 
Next, I moved on to the coffee table and you guys, I found this gorgeous table runner on the TJ Maxx website, which I never thought I was gonna receive, okay? My package took forever to arrive and I did not think I was gonna get it in time, but I was ecstatic when I finally received it. It's got black and gold beading and it's just the most beautiful runner I've ever seen. And then I added in that black and gold platter from at home and made a little centerpiece out of it with those glitter pumpkins and some black rocks as well as that I lit the black flame candle candle from Spirit Halloween. I then decorated a little tray that we have on the other side of the coffee table and I added in a toucan candle holder that I got from Bath and Body Works this year. And then I added in this gold owl tiki mug that I decided to use temporarily as a vase. Next, I added in this charcuterie board that I got from Anthropology last year. And then on top of it, I put a golden black bowl that I got from TJ Maxx that I filled with black cobwebs and then added in a marble skull on top. Finally, I added some bats to the wall above our bar cart because I felt like the wall really needed something to tie in the entire look, just to add an extra spooky touch. And I feel like they turned out beautifully. Before moving on, you guys know I had to put on one of my favorite movies of all time, which is John Carpenter's Halloween. Of course, it's necessary. And on this evening, I decided to decorate our dining table. You guys know that I love to use cobwebs on my dining table every year. I decided to use a giant set of cobwebs this year to cover the entire table. So at the end of stretching it out, it almost looks like fog billowing from the table. I just absolutely love the effect that this gives off, but it does take a lot of stretching and manipulating of the cobwebs to get it to cooperate. Stretch it out to the bottom of the table, and at the end, you are left with a beautiful foggy effect. On top of the cobwebs, I added in another velvet runner to begin the tablescape. And next I added in the branchy black wreath with the candelabra and black roses with the eyeballs. I just think that they create such a gorgeous, simple, spooky look. It's really hard for me to get away from it because it just works so well. So I had to do it at least one more time. Next I added in this birdcage that we just spray painted black. And then I added in a black crow as well as the cloche that I decorated last year. Next, I added in some ceramic skulls that we've had for years, as well as those skeleton hand votive holders. I finished off the tablescape by again adding more creepy cloth and draping it in places that I felt appropriate, like over the birdcage and one of the ceramic skulls. And I also added in those very Borgen and Burke's Harry Potter-esque taper candles from Spirit of Halloween. I then set the table similarly to how I did last year. I used these spider placemats as well as some matte black plates, the small white plates that I hand painted as well as these beautiful spider bowls and matte black silverware. Lastly, I added some short cocktail glasses with more of those LED light up ice cubes with the cobwebs on top to create that glowing dry ice effect. Once again, we broke out the webcaster gun to finish the look off with a very spooky effect. Now it's finally time for the very best part of this video, which is the montage of all of the decor lit up at night. I hope you guys enjoy. 